Met a Moose in Maine One Day by Ed Shankman, illustrated by Dave O'Neill. I met a moose in Maine one day. I met a moose in Maine one day. Just how it happened, I can't say. I brushed my teeth, I combed my hair, and all at once, the moose was there. In Maine, as you know, the moose come and go. They relax in the streams, they make tracks in the snow. They live in the woods with the bear and the hare, and whatever they're doing, they do it out there. That is why, in this case, something seemed out of place. To be here with a moose, in my house, face to face. The moose was so big, so wide, and so tall, I was not sure at all he could squeeze through the hall. He tried to be small, and he made sure to crawl, but those antlers of his still left marks on the wall. I don't mean to suggest that the beast was a pest. In fact, I felt blessed just to have such a guest, because by any measure, this moose was a treasure. His smile was charming, his manners a pleasure. We shared a few laughs, we talked quite a lot, and he told me some things that I never forgot. Then we played hide and seek, but it was no use. It seems this is not the best game for a moose. And then after that, we decided to race. But a moose, when he runs, needs a great deal of space. He smashed every bottle and jar in the place, and the napkins I had were too small for his face. So I took him outside, and we walked for a while, until we reached town, which is more than a mile. If you want to meet friends and you need an excuse, I suggest that you walk into town with a moose. All the people we passed stopped to give their regards. They leaned from their windows, they waved from their yards. Old men on their porches seemed very impressed that a neighbor of theirs had a moose for a guest. At the general store, people's chins hit the floor when the moose and I casually walked through the door. I bought a few things that a moose never buys because everyone knows a moose loves a surprise. I bought him some fudge and a lumberjack's hat and some great maple syrup and boy he liked that. Cause you know, maple syrup's the best thing by far that anyone's ever put into a jar. And the hat, I must say, was precisely his size in a blue that I thought really brought out his eyes. At night we went dancing, we really let loose, and there's nothing quite like letting loose with a moose. We did a few things that a moose rarely does, and if that sounds exciting, believe me, it was. But this was just one little village in Maine. There were so many to see, so we hopped on a plane. From Auburn to Belfast, from Friendship to Lee, that moose and I saw every sight we could see. We walked every walk, and we viewed every view, and the moose I met took me to Walla Grass too. In Camden, a lot of us got on a yacht, and we docked before dark in a beautiful spot. We saw fish having fun. We watched seals eating meals. We met lobsters and otters and eagles and eels. In Bangor, we climbed on a raft made of logs and we floated down river with beavers and frogs. We hopped and we jumped and we rocked and we rolled as we rushed through the rapids like loggers of old. We stopped off in Portland one beautiful day to eat a fine lunch in an outdoor cafe. We ordered the salmon with blueberry juice and there's no better juice you can drink with a moose. We left room for dessert because we heard that they make the world's best selection of chocolate moose 
cake. When we'd had all our fun and our travel was done, we stopped by the roadside and stood in the sun. I think we were somewhere near Smithfield or Rome when the moose I met said it was time to go home. He gave me a wink and I gave him a smile. We hugged and we said our goodbyes for a while. Then he went on his way, but he made sure to say that he knew he would come back and see me someday. Now I know that my story may sound out of whack. Even I find it hard to believe looking back. But it wasn't a dream, and it wasn't pretend. I did meet a moose, and that moose is my friend.